Good people, the Viper 8K. Man, this thing is exciting. Oh, wait a second, this is the wrong one. There we go. The power of the Viper. All right, so this whole conversation about the Viper 8K, it needs to happen because we can approach it from many angles, right? Like it's the next evolution of technology for gaming peripherals. You know, we saw the 4000 Hertz polling with the Corsair K100 keyboard. And now eventually that's going to translate into slightly higher Hertz on a mouse. And I mean, that's kind of the future, right? Like we've gone through many steps of iterations of technological improvements with sensors. Like we have 20,000 DPI sensors that don't really make any sense for the user, but they're there because technology allows it to be implemented and rolled out at an affordable price point. I also feel like we've gone through a bunch of iterations of the lightweight design and how companies approach designing the shell with holes or without. And it's really cool to see other companies like Extrify with the M42 RGB actually give you customization in terms of shape. So being able to swap out the backplate to fit your grip style better. And so when Razer approached us and said, hey, we're releasing an 8,000 Hertz mouse, I got excited because I definitely wanted to see if you can feel the difference. And I've had the prototype for several months now. I finally have the finished product in my hand. And by the way, that comes with stickers. I leave links below for the 8K, but this is an awesome move. So let's talk about exactly what is the technology? What's my experience like? And does this change the industry in any way? Right after this. The new Corsair K100 RGB is a true flagship keyboard with 4000 Hz polling rate and new OPX optical mechanical switches, quality PBT keycaps, a gorgeous redesign all around, and a new IQ wheel that has a lot of functionality. Check out the K100 RGB down below. I'm sure many of you are skeptical and at the very first briefing, I was too. I have a question actually, um, why does 8K matter? Honestly, I kept asking the same question over and over again, because from a marketing perspective, it's so fluff, right? You can say you have the fastest mouse in the world. It has eight times reduced latency versus your traditional 1000 Hertz mouse. But for the general consumer, that doesn't matter. What really is important though, is the technological framework that pushes this whole thing forward. And in fact, you do, have these benefits of reduced input latency from, from the click, from motion of the mouse, uh, and that all add up to a bit more of a consistent experience. Maybe not for me, maybe not for 90% of you, but for esports level, like really high competitive gamers, this is an awesome thing, right? And then of course I had my second question. Okay, so from a technical perspective, it makes sense, but it doesn't matter really for the end user unless the price is right. Which brings us to this next point, and this is a brilliant move by Razer, launching the Razer Viper 8K at the same price of $79 as the original Razer Viper. With this price, I think it's an excellent way to kind of brute force your way into the market, especially because the original Viper is being discontinued. So it's not like you have the options between the two, and this is clearly Razer's uh, trying to take advantage of the situation, not giving you a price markup for adopting this technology for like the enthusiasts, but really forcing you into it instead. So let's talk about what's different between the two mice. So first, the Razer Viper 8K is two grams heavier at 71 grams versus 69. We have second gen Razer optical mouse switches, which are the fastest switches on the market. Again, one of those marketing things that doesn't really matter, but it makes sense that they would put an optical switch into this mouse and not the mechanical, because from our conversation with the Razer engineers, if you have a mechanical switch, it kind of defeats the purpose of that instantaneous reaction because of debounce delay and other factors. So an optical switch on the fast fastest mouse in the world, I mean, those two align. The sensor is improved with higher resolution, so up to 20,000 DPI versus 16,000 DPI on the original. Now, of course, we have true 8,000 Hertz polling versus 1,000 Hertz. The cable is slightly thicker to accommodate additional wiring to carry that signal, although it is still USB 2 compatible, so you don't need a USB 3 port to have this mouse running at 8,000 Hertz. And we also have smoother glide because of 100% PTFE feet. As for the rest of the body, it's identical to the original, so a true ambidextrous design with the side browser buttons on both the left and the right side with nice uh, texture grip. The Razer logo is illuminated and then goes completely offline when the RGB is disabled. And at the bottom of the mouse, we have a DPI switch button that is color coded with up to five profiles. Shape wise, it fits my hybrid style perfectly. It's definitely in my top five for gaming mice. And if you want to see our top 10 collection, check it out right over here. And now I feel like we're primed to talk about this whole hyperpoling of 8,000 Hertz, which actually gives us 8,000 
unique individual reports per second. Now, polling rate is how many times a second the mouse sends its information to the computer in both its location and clicks as well. And that is reported in Hertz. So a traditional mouse of a thousand Hertz will report its location and its clicks a thousand times per second back to the computer. So if we were to draw a perfect curved line, it would look something like this, but on a microsecond level, 1000 Hertz, it's gonna look something like this, right? It's not going to be this perfect line and these spaces are going to represent our latency of one millisecond response time between each pole. So this is what it looks like at 1000 Hertz. At 8000 Hertz, we have eight little dashes in between the same amount of space. So this also represents one millisecond of space in time, but uh, we have 0.125 milliseconds between each polling rate. So our line, our curved line is going to look much, much smoother without any micro stutters. And so this is 8,000 Hertz. Not sure why those zeros are so chunky, but you can clearly see the difference, right? This graph is also very interesting because it clearly shows how superior faster polling is when it comes to micro stutters shown as the delay between the frame rendering and when the polling occurs. For example, if this polling section represents a mouse click, you don't actually see it until a new frame begins to render. And that delay is significantly reduced with faster polling. Also an interesting observation is that I've noticed CPU usage in my scenario with 8,000 Hertz to be slightly higher versus when I'm using a 1,000 Hertz mouse. And that CPU usage almost doubled, went from 4% to 8% when I'm moving the mouse sporadically. And so that is something to keep in mind, which is why Razer actually provided us with the minimum testing specifications for hardware because this 8,000 Hertz polling, you know, it has to be processed somehow. And that brings up another question about Will USB controllers be bottlenecking and introducing any more latency into the equation when you're dealing with such large bandwidths? And so I guess we'll have to find out. And so far, I mean, I've only noticed higher CPU usage, but when I'm sure this technology gets into many more technical hands, we'll find out. And this is where the conversation might be similar to two gamers discussing uh, refresh rates on screens, like 144 Hertz versus 240 Hertz. 240 Hertz is obviously faster and better, but can you notice the difference, right? Between 144 Hertz, which is already incredibly fast. And so this is where this conversation with mice polling rate, a thousand Hertz versus 8,000 Hertz, you know, like it's obviously eight times faster. So 0.125 millisecond response time versus one millisecond response time. And that gives you just overall more consistent registration and smoother tracking with actual mouse cursor, not just clicking on the mouse, but moving the mouse on screen as well. It is fascinating to see this graph provided by Razer. So competing mice versus what we see with Razer 8K in terms of actual millisecond response time for input latency. And so technically Razer became this market leader for mice and the Viper 8K becomes an extension of your aim, not just for clicks, but for mouse movement as well. Razer told us that they want to move up as monitor refresh rate goes up. So like right now I'm using a 360 Hertz display and I'm, they're not becoming very common right now. Still, it's very expensive, but it's good that peripherals are catching up and eventually other hardware will too. And so that brings me to the conversation about the entire input latency ecosystem, right? So it's not just the mouse, but it's, everything from the monitor side, from your hardware, from your CPU. So having the best performance possible from this click latency example is not just dependent on the peripherals, but the entire pipeline of click, that signal gets processed and gets you know displayed on your monitor. Right now, for example, am I at a disadvantage by using a 1000 Hertz keyboard, but an 8000 Hertz mouse? I don't think so because my level of FPS gaming isn't really up here yet. And I feel like many other gaming brands will try and sell you higher polling peripherals just so that you can have a more cohesive set of peripherals that can support anything above a thousand Hertz polling rate. And also frame rate is important, right? Frame rate in your games, and refresh rate of your monitor. If you have a 60 Hertz display and you have a, a thousand, 8,000 Hertz mouse, those two don't align, right? So the 8,000 Hertz is going to be appealing for anyone who's trying to really maximize performance uh, in terms of hardware, monitor refresh rate, the best FPS possible. As for my gaming experience with the Viper AK versus the original, this is where we move into the subjective territory because like I'm not an extreme pro gamer, right? So I couldn't really feel the difference. And 
I tried to do like A-B testing, not knowing which mouse was plugged in. I mean, as long as my DPI is correct and I'm comfortable with the shape, I feel like you can perform very well. But 8K gives you that little bit of a confidence boost of having just more smooth and precise tracking of the mouse, especially when you're dealing with anything that's above 144 Hertz and refresh rate as well. So for CSGO, it's been great. Jumping into Call of Duty, I mean, one taps are super easy and I'm not sure if this is 8K talking or just a, a mouse in general is good enough for what it does. And your DPI, of course, is very comfortable for your aim style. Technically, it's supposed to offer a more superior experience, right? And I think I got there, but I can't say 100% sure. What I can say is that the price is the same as the original, so it doesn't make a difference because now it's the same mouse with just better tech and that pushes the industry forward. All right, so for my conclusion, I wanna say that it's good that this technology is being pushed forward to the market and we as users are going to adopt it because you have no choice. You know, the original Viper is being discontinued and they're playing it smart of keeping the price the same because otherwise, why would I recommend it if I can't subjectively tell the difference? You know, I understand all the technical advantages, but from a subjective, maybe I'm not the right target audience. Like I'm not in that pro gamer who spends eight hours and knowing exactly how my mouse behaves. But now we'll, we'll see hardware and software trying to catch up to these faster polling rates and hopefully not introduce any other latency in the pipeline. But I'm really curious to hear what you think about 8K polling. Let me know in the comments. I'm wondering if we're gonna stumble upon the same situation as with Apple stop shipping chargers with their smartphones. Like will all peripheral makers now start giving us higher polling peripherals as a you know, way to kind of like push the industry forward. And so I think that's coming for sure. But I'm Dimitri, thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video.